So I like to use the Bible as a way to get instruction on how I should live my life. And um, the Bible is filled with so many stories, parables, and, you know, things like that, that if you take the time to actually distill the wisdom that's coming out of it, you can actually learn a lot and have principles that you can live by. Now, one of my favorite parables is the parable of the three servants, and it's found in Matthew chapter 25 uh, from verse uh, 14, um, you know, uh, going forward. Now, <clears throat> here's the setting. A master was leaving to go on a long journey. He had three servants, and one servant, he gave him five talents. Another servant, he gave him two talents, and another servant, he gave him one. And the reason why he gave them different amounts of talent was, as the Bible says, he was entrusting them according to their ability. So the person who had the most ability was given more, and obviously the person who had the least ability was given less. Now, where it becomes interesting, if you, especially if you're reading from the New Living Translation, right, uh, in verse 16, it says, the servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money. So the person who was given the most, what he did with the money is he invested it. That's key. So I just want to highlight that. And let me continue reading. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work, keyword, work, and earned two more. The one with the five went to invest and got five more. So he got five, invested the five, got five more. The guy who got two went to work and got two more, right? But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. So this guy didn't do anything with it. And that's probably why he got one, because his ability... Um, wasn't much. So one of the key principles I learned from that is that there are three vehicles here, right? One vehicle was dig a hole, do nothing. Basically, this guy is lazy, right? Because he didn't go to work, he didn't invest, he didn't do anything with the resource that he was given. The guy who was given two went to work. But the vehicle that he was using, when you're working, you're trading time, right? So you, if you go to work, you're trading uh, time in order for you to get money back. So you're limited, <clears throat> excuse me, you're limited in your potential um, for return because there's only 24 hours in a day, right? You cannot create an extra hour. You cannot create 10 extra hours. So you're limited in how much return you can get when you go to work. But the person who invested it you know, got more mainly because when you invest, your return is unlimited. Why? Because money is working for you. So you're not actively working. You're not trading your time for money. You're letting the money go to work on your behalf. And one thing about money is that it's unlimited. It's an unlimited resource unlike time. And that's why he was able to actually then double what he had received. So the key thing there too is that one person was lazy one person was really looking to put in the work, but the other person was creative, right? So if you also tap into your creative abilities, you can unlock tremendous value because creativity is also unlimited, right? You can literally sit down and come up with ideas that can truly change the world and create so much value in the world. And that's how people actually create wealth. If you think about it, People become wealthy not by the amount of work they put in, right? You become wealthy by creating something of value, right? Creating comes from creativity. So when you create something of value, you're then able to extract that value, and that's how you end up becoming uh, extremely wealthy. So you come up with this brilliant idea, you bring it to life, and then, you know, you, you get a tremendous amount of money from it. So this um, parable you know, guides me in multiple fronts. Number one, the number one purpose for money is not for you to pay bills, right? And, you know, pay rent and whatnot. The number one purpose for money is for money to go to work. The number one pur purpose for money is for you to invest it 
so that it can create more money. So in another video, I can talk about the different vehicles you could uh, use to invest and grow your money, but I want you to understand that. So when you get your paycheck, you want to be thinking about the investment bucket first, right? Um, because if you can put more money to work, you can generate more money using that money, um, and that's how you create wealth. Number two is um, if you have a job, right, if you're trading your time for money, you also want to make sure you're a good steward of your job so that you can uh, generate that return. But also number three, if you're lazy, if you dig a hole and you bury your talents and you don't do anything with the talent, it will be taken away from you. Because in the story, when the master returns and he asks all three servants to give an account of what they were able to do with what he had entrusted them, the person who buried the one, guess what? The master took it and gave it to the person who had more. So sometimes in life, you know, you lose things in life, you lose opportunities, you lose relationships and so many different things. It's because of the way you managed the little that God had trusted you. And then those opportunities uh, go to other people. So that's a very key, uh, interesting parable in the story where you can really extract a lot of value. So I highly recommend that you go read it and see what are some of the things that also pop out uh, for you when you're reading it. For me personally, it was, you know, you should focus on investing. You should not go dig a hole and be lazy and not use um, what God has given you in order for you to create more. But more importantly, you need to tap into your creativity to, to create more. So feel free to chat in the comments. Uh, any questions, thoughts, you know, ideas or insights that you get when you read this Bible verse. As you can see, I've put uh, the, 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 the full chapter right here. But also, if there are other parables within the story that we can extract some business and life lessons and that we can apply, I would like to know because the Bible is filled with so much wisdom and the more I read it, the more I uncover more. But I'm curious to hear some of the ones that you guys have have uh, have tapped in. And also, don't forget, subscribe and click that bell so that whenever I drop more gems, you guys can check it out. And uh, thank you so much for joining and looking forward to um, what's in store next. I have some couple of interesting videos around biblical concepts and entrepreneurship coming, so you definitely want to stay locked in.